You guys already know I've been making that content for the upcoming event in Master Duel for September 2023, the King of the Island Monster Type and the Fusion X Xyz Festival. So what about ranked mode? Well, we're slowly making our way through Diamond, but we're currently on an eight win streak, taking a look at our match history. How many matches is this now? 10, and we've only lost that one scrubby match that we played us being the scrub that is, where we played into Nibiru and the opponent drew the one of. But other than that, we've been absolutely killing it. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a couple of my recent matches on my way up to Diamond 3 in this flawless win streak with, of course, Flo Andri's deckless video is linked in the description. And let's go ahead and get into those matches now. You know, one of the good reasons to play Flo Andri's is because while you might brick like this sometimes, you might just get lucky. And shifter in the draw phase is enough to make some people just scoop it up. And like that, we extended our win streak. I wonder if like that last player had some PTSD with shifter or something and they were just like, I can't handle it, I gotta leave. Anyways, in this next match, we are going first and we start off with the newly semi-limited pot of extravagance, drawing into two dead cards because we can't use prosperity the turn we use extravagance and evenly matches useless going first, but that's how we build the deck so we're not complaining. We have two birds in our hand, but we can't actually play because Tukin has nothing to target. So if we summon Eaglin, Search, Empin, summon Tukin, the summoning fizzle. So we have to use the jack in the hand, which is a new one of that replaced the pot of extravagance. And look at it in this scenario, instead of drawing a pot of extravagance, like, you know, or a second one in our hand that would have been dead, we drew a jack in the hand, which actually makes our hand live. So we went from potentially a losing situation to now a winning situation with jack in the hand. The reason I'm pausing it here is very important though, if you're a flow on Reese player, or even if you're not, knowing this interaction is still very important. So if you watch my deck list video, which is linked in the description, you know that I played two Tukin and one Stree. Quantum, why did you reveal the one of Stree along with Eaglin and, Emp and well, geez, Eaglin and Robina? And the opponent could have taken your one of Stree and kept you off Stree for the whole game. Yes, they could have if they knew, um, but they opted to take Eaglin, so they made my life easy, but I was expecting them to take Robina as they usually do. If they took Robina, I needed to take the Stree because if I take Stree here, now my hand goes from Eaglin and Tukin, which fizzles out the summoning to Eaglin and Stree, which allows me to search for Empin, summon Stree, banish part of Extravagance, and then summon Empin, and I get my Empin in rotation. From there, I could go for map, map effect, banish, uh, or reveal Tukin, banish Robina, summon Tukin, get back Robina. Yes, I don't get trap card if I don't do it that way, but at least I get Robina, or I could just activate map, banish trap, summon two can get trap back. So I did it this way because I had to take the risk of losing the Shree. The opponent made my life super easy though, taking the card that was absolutely meaningless, not taking the Shree and giving me the Robina, which also would have been fine, but they take the Eaglin and leave the Shree in the deck, but give me the Robina instead. So hopefully you understood that interaction. That's why we had to play it this way to unbrick our hand. And it's looking pretty good. No interruptions from the opponent side because despite having a bricked hand to start, we still have to worry about Ash Blossom, which I guess the Jack in the Hand and the Pot of Extravagance are good Ash checks, but also an Infinite Impermanent. So, you know, this is the uphill battle you face with Flamandries when you play this deck. Not only do you fight yourself because you brick, but you also fight against the opponent's hand traps, which are rampant in this format for sure. Thankfully, we've been able to survive this long without running into them. The opponent does reveal, or without running into too many of them, we definitely run into them obviously, but um, we've been able to play around them. The opponent reveals that they're on Runic Kashtira, and I'm like, all right, uh, you're gonna go for the deck out? Because they just straight off the bat Smiting Storm me for five, and I'm like, if you can't deck me out, you know, banishing my cards is actually pretty good. I mean, I guess you don't want to see your Ryza and Apex Avion banished, but uh, you know what, we can still hopefully do some damage with this. Let's see, the opponent gets Ogre and uses the effect to get preparations. And then they're gonna slumber to summon and because of this, I'm going to chain the Dreaming Town here to search for my Apex. Kind of two reasons why, because I wanna be able to get Apex to hand before it gets banished. And I also want to be able to negate the fountain that they're gonna search. So if they, yeah, they're gonna search fountain, that's fine. They discard my Eaglin uh, and then they're gonna play fountain, I'll Apex negate it, right? The opponent though has different plans because they have the good hand. They've got, you know, two, three runic spells, freezing curses on my Eaglin, which is going to force me to flip down my field. And you know, it's obvious why the opponent wasn't on Imperm, and you know, I guess they didn't draw Ash, but you know, they could have drawn Imperm because they're on Runic, and Runic has its own Imperm. Only, you know, it's a, it's a little bit easier to manage because you don't have to set it and worry about the column, but hey, we are still able to dodge it with the Book of Eclipse. So with that in mind, we summon the Stree, and Stree is going to banish that Freezing Curses because that is one of uh, the main annoyances for Flawanderies. We don't care about Flashing Fire. Flashing Fire does nothing against us, and you play three of those, but if we can get one of two Freezing Curses out of the way, that is great. So we summon Stree to banish it, and then we have to tribute off the Toucan, 
Um, it goes to grave because it was face down and we get the Apex Avion on field. During the end phase, these two cards will get flipped face up though and the opponent will get to draw two. But if they activate Fountain, we Apex negate, it gets destroyed. They're stuck with a Huggin in the extra monster zone. They can't Jerry it back. They can't summon another Huggin to search. So we're looking pretty good. What might the opponent have in hand though? Three other mystery cards, right? Let's find out. Okay, we're going to bring Street back to hand before we uh, let the opponent continue to play. They normal summon the Unicorn by tributing two monsters. And you know what? That was, this was actually smart because they played around map. They said, you know what? I'm going to use my Unicorn right now and force you to use your map. And either you have another tribute monster in hand or you're going to use your map, summon your Robina, and it's going to do nothing because you have no other tribute monster with your Apex still stuck on board. Now, why did I negate the Unicorn here? Because I essentially have to negate either the Unicorn or the Birth. And I'm going to opt to negate the Unicorn here because I'm like, if you bring back or if you have a hard drawn Birth, I can live with that. But I'll get the monster off the field at least because if, they, if I allow all of this to resolve and try to wait for them to activate Fountain, the birth will bring back the ogre and ogre has this annoying little stat line of being 100 attack more than apex avion and therefore they will crash into the apex and or not even crash into it just beat over it and i lose my apex right so i have to either negate the unicorn or the birth otherwise i lose my apex when they bring back the ogre and beat over it in the battle phase so i'm just going to straight up negate the unicorn and destroy it the opponent man they have the god hand huh they just got every runic spell that they need so it's fine though they're gonna go ahead and activate flashing fire to summon the huggin and get the draw three off of the fountain and they pitch the preparations because i guess they realize it's kind of useless against us in order to grab their other fountain but the main nuisance here is that they're going to be able to draw three off of that fountain they're going to kaiju my empin and i'm like sure that actually helps me but uh, i'll take it during the draw phase, they're going to destruction my map, and I'm like, okay, sure. And then they're going to golden droplet, giving me a draw. I'm like, why are you doing this in the draw phase? I still have 16 cards, and uh, you must not realize that I can OTK you still. <laughs> so they're really trying hard to deck me out. I, I don't know. They're yeah. I, I don't know what they're trying to draw into here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and flip up Eaglin so that if it gets banned or tributed, it gets banished instead of going to graveyard when it's face down. We're going to activate unexplored wins, and the opponent already used their destruction. So you're not going to be outing this now at this point i could just straight up apex get the fountain off field and um tribute off the eaglin and then just keep control of the match because the opponent could attempt to summon another hug in here they've already used one i would send this one so they'd be down to their final one if they even play three so could they no they wouldn't summon another one right they'd summon jerry to get back fountain um if, if they had a runic spell but hey if we out the runic fountain they can't activate any runic spells but I think I get a little greedy here. I'm just going to go ahead and put back Robina, draw one. Of course, every time I every time I use this card, I always draw into another bird. I, I, I don't understand. It's like the game is programmed to do this every time. Anyways, we're going to start with Normal Summon Stree. And what do we banish? Empin. Okay, yeah. So we're not playing into a potential Ash here by summoning Robina. We're just going to go Stree, banish Empin. Tukin, bring back the Empin. And then use the Unexplored Winds. Once we see the opponent doesn't have the other copy of Freezing Curses, we're going to tribute off the or send off the Fountain with the Unexplored Winds and get the Empin on board. Just banish Trap Card for the sake of banishing it. No real need to do that. But off of the Empin Summon, we are also going to tribute off the Huggin for the Apex Avia. Now, 522 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. The opponent can't activate any Quick Place from their hand any longer with no Fountain. And just like that, we are going to OTK. They didn't really need to Golden Droplet me. I still had game without it. But uh, yeah, maybe you need to reevaluate how you're playing your Runic deck and being so aggressive and trying to deck people out. Because if you can't deck them out, what's the point? And in this next match here, we actually draw double evenly matched going first, but we do have the Pot of Extravagance. And you know what? I said this when this card was semi-limited and y'all were like, oh my god, they hit Flanderies again. And I'm like, you know what, guys? It actually isn't that bad of a hit. And you saw in that like last game, like if I was playing three Pot of Extravagance, I would have drawn two instead of that one Pot and one Jack in the Hand. And I would have been completely bricked, right? So the Jack in the Hand actually won me that last game. Um, and playing two is actually not that bad. You know, you see it sometimes, you see it don't, you, you, or you don't see it other times, it's, it's okay. But our hand is, is bricked here, right? Like, or, like well, it is bricked. And thankfully, if the opponent had Ash, we had the call by, but they're gonna max C. I quickly switched my toggle to off, so it didn't indicate that I had a called by. Um, but weird, weird, uh, weird position to call by. I mean, um, to max C. Why wouldn't you do it in the draw phase? If you're like, why would you do it in response to part of extravagance? Like, what anyways uh yeah we're gonna let this resolve obviously and we're gonna draw two. Oh my god the game loves me i draw robina and what advent of adventure so now i have an imperm negate and a call by the grave for an ash negate and i'm just like holy crap the only thing that stops you here just so you guys are aware is gamma right if you have if they have gamma you just like lose um 
But yeah, we're going to go ahead and normal summon Robina and hope for no Gamma. And the opponent has no other interruption. So that's good. They got four cards in hand. And they got a Maxi in the graveyard, which is a beautiful rise of target for you as a Flo Andres player. Because you would love for them to just draw that Maxi again, wasting a draw phase for their turn. Brings back memories of Rise of the Storm Monarch back in my day when Monarch Control was a thing. Anyways, the opponent thought here for like literally like a minute. Um, and then they decided to normal summon Springen's kit and get the uh, branded fusion. And again, no, I'm not harping on the guy for thinking. You need to make sure you, you're able to think through your lines. So actually props to you for thinking through your lines and taking your time and not trying to rush the play. So, you know, good on you. Um, but they put back a card and they got the branded fusion. And I'm like, well, because you were thinking for so long, my guess is you're kind of bricked up and you're thinking about how you're going to try to play around my interruption. So I'm just going to go straight for the Apex Avion. Normally, I don't think I would do this, but because they sat there and thought for so long, I'm like, I'm gonna put you on, let me see you out this Apex, and sure enough, Branded Fusion was their only play, and they just swoop it up once they see the Apex hit the board. And that is how we extended to an eight win streak in Diamond so far with Flo Andres. I think I'm like 11 and one, or no, 10 and one, so over 90% win rate at this point, guys. You know that's going in the title and or thumbnail for that clickbait title. And I guess it's not really clickbait because it's true, right? Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed, Quantum is out.